my brand new Tauchpanzer from Amazon. And just to the left, you can find my six year old Panzer 3. Today, we'll be doing a little review on the brand new Tauchpanzer and seeing how it compares to my $64 Amazon Panzer 3. For the rest of the review, we'll be calling this one the Panzer 3, and we'll be calling this one the Tauchpanzer. The easiest way, of course, to distinguish these two is, of course, the colors. This one being a uh, metal gray, and this one being a light desert tan. Other distinguishes between them is the short-barreled, what I think is supposed to be a 50mm gun, and the long-barreled 50mm gun. Another interesting thing that separates these two is the addition of the snorkel on the Tauchpanzer. We can also see that on the back of the Tauchpanzer, all of the vents are closed, as well as the exhaust. Unlike this Panzer III, which has open vents, well, open stickers. That's because Tauch in German means dive, and the goal of the Tauchpanzer was to take part in Operation Sea Lion, an amphibious assault on England. They mounted these snorkels and closed off all the exhaust so that the tanks could drive along the bottom of the ocean and then onto the beachheads in England. This never came to be, luckily. Now, obviously, the details on the Panzer III are a little bit less than the Tauchpanzer. This is because it survived six years of my somewhat destructive childhood. You can even see that I still haven't even cleaned the Panzer III. But the Tauchpanzer has a lot of very interesting details. This tank mounts the 6.0 TKS tank board. So that means that this tank has the smoke, sound, uh, proportional steering, proportional turret turning, uh, remote functions such as sound control on the remote itself, uh, and smoke control on the remote itself. It also has two different sound boards on there, so you can change the sounds of the tank if you so please. This tank, however, for the $64 price, uh, goes forward, backwards, left, right, neutral steer, uh, turret, left, right, gun barrel, up and down, and both do shoot BBs. However, this tank does not come with sound or smoke and has a much older control board. In addition to the sound and smoke, this tank also comes with a BB firing function as well as an infrared firing function so that you can battle other tanks. One very interesting thing to note about the features of this Panzer III is that it actually came with a demo mode. So that means that when you put this tank in demo mode, it'll drive, shoot, turn the turret, do a bunch of cool things, you know, like tank stuff, without you having to put any input into the controller. I have not seen any other Henlong tank with that feature. Not sure why it was mounted on this one. One of the other main differences that I have discovered is the way that the BB firing mechanism is loaded. Here on the older Panzer III, you have this nice little flap that opens up and you'll load your BBs in here. Whereas on this tank, this is not a flap and you have to open up the commander's cupola, which you can also open up through these hatches. And here we have the controllers for both Panzer III's. This one on the left being for the Panzer III, and this one on the right being for the Tauchpanzer. So of course you have your standard controls up here with movement and barrel control. However, for the Tauchpanzer, down and up, both do barrel control, both up and down. And for the Panzer III, you hold down on the left stick to cycle the barrel up and down, and hold up on the left stick to fire the gun. With the Panzer III, you have your demo mode, on off, and I'm not quite sure which one this one is. I have forgotten. You also have the ability to switch which frequency. So you can run up to three of these older tanks together. With the new controller, you have your on off button, these two buttons for sound control, aka switching between the two preset sounds, your volume control, and turning on and off smoke. With this one, you have both of these top buttons to hold down in order to fire the main gun, and hold down the left one to fire the machine gun. 
and under here we can see the ABC selector which corresponds with the ABC selector on the transmitter itself. The Panzer III in real life had, was one of the first tanks to use torsion bar suspension instead of a bogey system. This is represented in Henlong's form by these individually sprung road wheels. Both the Tauch Panzer and the original Panzer III share this design, since they are essentially the same molds. Here we have a comparison of the two batteries for the tank, this larger yellow one being for the Panzer III and this smaller one being for the Tauch Panzer. Uh, these, this one is 1700 milliamp hours and this one's about 1800. So that'll run this tank for about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, and this tank with its lower features will run for about 40 minutes, in my experience. This is a nickel cadmium battery and this is a lithon lithium ion battery. Now that brings me to my one point that I do not like about the Talc Panzer. I cannot mount these older, larger batteries to this. Um, along with the Stug, this Panzer III comes with a smaller compartment. This is deep enough for these lithium ion batteries. And then this section right here, which is not deep enough to house these older nickel cadmium batteries, uh, as well as um, larger batteries in general. So with uh, the Panzer III and also I believe the Stug III, I exclusively have to use these smaller batteries, whereas I have about eight of these larger batteries that I can use on the rest of my tanks. The Tauch Panzer here is very, very nice. But that might just be because it's new. There are some issues with the tank, of course. For one, the cupola flaps on these, especially the Panzer III and the Panzer IV, are very, very thin and can be easily broken, especially with smaller hands. The other thing is this lip you can see here that sort of protects the Panzer III from shot traps is also a little bit too close with this mantlet and sometimes will interfere with it. So then, you might ask, if you already have one Panzer III, why do you need a second one? Well, it's simple. I absolutely adore both of these Panzer III's. The Panzer III was my very first Henlong tank. It's a perfect size to fit in a backpack. The size is of particular interest to me because I do plan on taking this as my Travelpanzer, 
So that just means take. Although you may argue that I could have done the exact same thing, but with this older Panzer III. However, this Panzer III has a lot of damage. For example, it survived one day in the 4th of July, where the bottom was burnt, and some <coughs> custom modifications on the inside that we can go over in a separate video. My attempt to waterproof the tank, I will say, has not been successful. FYI, neither of these tanks are waterproof. However, in my experience, if you do get them wet, usually you can leave them out for a little bit to dry with the covers off, and they should be all right. So then, was this tank worth the extra money? In my opinion, yes, definitely. In combination with the sounds, the infrared features, and the extra LED lights, as well as it just being newer, I think it is worth it. Especially since, when I looked on Amazon, on my Buy It Again tab, this tank came in at $159, which in my mind, would not have been worth it. So where did the tank stand on hobby scale? Panzer, the newer one of course, is about in between uh, hobby and toy scale. The Talkpanzer will be just as happy running over small army men as it is going on an actual course and fighting with other tanks. Of course, they don't use the Tamiya uh, infrared system, so there will be some modifications that you'll have to do if you want to fight in a club with these. This Panzer III is of course much closer to the toy side since it lacks features such as infrared and sound and smoke, but it's still a good tank nonetheless.